What's up guys? So we're here with Bulletproof Powder Coating. We have the roll cage for the 240 back here and it looks so good. James, you absolutely killed it on this roll cage and we will meet James. For anyone that doesn't know, James actually did Bulkin's um, roll cage. Um, so, and I know he's done, actually he's done actually a couple of other big creators um, roll cages as well as arc movement Mike's roll cage. So we're gonna definitely leave his information right here But we meet we will meet James later in this vlog But right now we're at bulletproof powder coating where we're about to drop off the cage for powder coating I'm super excited because this cage actually looks absolutely amazing James blew it out of the water the design and everything as well looks really cool I told him what I wanted, but I let James Use his creative imagination and basically design the roll cage himself. And one thing that I look at and kind of envision in my head is that it kind of looks like a Spider-Man like style cage, like a bunch of webs everywhere. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think, but I think this looks absolutely cool. And for all of you guys that have been staying in touch, you guys know Stan Society Garage is coming back. So we might put a little Stan Society Garage design in here but that's going to look super sick and I can't wait to show you guys what this is going to look like after powder coating. Um, I've actually been to Bulletproof multiple times to get some stuff. It's just I haven't had or needed anything powder coated in a very long time so we haven't been here but now I'm going to be able to show you guys the kind of work that they do and just <laughs> get ready because this cage is going to look absolutely amazing. Let's do a quick rundown. Last time uh, we at least on the 240, swapped out the fenders, did the ISR inner tie rods, which shout out to ISR, they sent me a new set over, but um, we were driving and then all of a sudden, the driver's side inner tie rod popped out, so that's kind of just forced me to have the 240 sitting for a while, watch this, you jack up the car, that's basically what happens because the inner tie rod is not in there. Apart from that, we have a lot of body work that we still have to do on the 240. There's a crazy like quarter panel dent right there, which honestly makes me just want to say YOLO and cut the quarter panels and install over fenders, which will also allow me to kind of get rid of that XS um, camber. I love camber. I love stancing on my cars, but for the 240, I kind of want it to be a little bit more... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I guess like a little bit more drivable in a sense because there's so much camber in the rear that I just wear out the inner tires so fast, specifically with the big one you see in there. And the 240, I honestly want to be able to drift it. I want to be able to go out and slide with it. So I feel like maybe slapping on some over fenders and taking the camber out will make me be able to enjoy and drive the car a little bit more. That's just food for thought right now. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but man, you guys comment down below. Let me know what do you guys think we should do. Number two, since we crashed the 240 at the track, the oil pan is cracked. There's leaking everywhere. So to be completely honest, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip the 1UZ out of the 240, um, take it down to the pop shop, have them do all the gaskets and everything again on the 240, make sure it's not leaking at all, drop it back into um, the 240 and then we'll be straight from there which then leads down to the other question is should we keep it five speed transmission from the ka which to be completely honest once you go to fifth gear and you drive over 100 miles it seems like the transmission is going to implode um, because there's so much torque from the um, 1uz going into the ka we could do six speed 1uz I mean, we could do the six-speed CD09 from the 350Z, but that transmission hangs so low that you honestly can't go low on these cars. So I kind of don't want to go that route. There is one other route, and that's the um, BMW transmission. Don't know too much about that, but we got to look into that. So there's just a lot of work that needs to be done to the 240 for it to be, I just want it to be a reliable 1UZ. Today, we're going to start off by just doing the simple stuff. We're gonna replace the inner tie rod. We're honestly gonna take this fender out because if you can notice on this tire, um, there's a lot of wear on it and that is because it is hitting this inside part of the wheel well. What we're basically gonna do is we're gonna take this fender off and we're gonna smack the hell out of this. You can see all that rubbing in there. We're gonna smack the hell out of everything in here with a sledgehammer and kind of get it dented in so we aren't running into any rubbing issues in there anymore.
this isn't the most S chassis thing ever. I don't know what is, but we banged the hell out of everything. We shouldn't have any more rubbing issues at all. You know what we're gonna do today? We're gonna get the car running um, to be able to drive it down to James, have him install the cage. Once the cage is installed in the 240 um, and it no longer needs to be moved around, then we'll rip the engine out do all the maintenance work on it, throw it back in, and then we'll be good to rock and roll. We finally got the tie rod boot covers and we got the driver's side installed. Look at that, looking nice and pretty in there now. So now we're gonna remove the tie rod and I'm gonna show you how to remove this outer tie rod. Whenever it comes to taking these off, these are low key a bitch to take off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a hammer, you're gonna smack the side of this a couple of times really hard to loosen it up and then you're gonna give it one nice hard tap up here and that should remove the solder tie rod. And there you go. And we finally have the tie boot covers on both sides. What we're gonna do now is throw the Vishnu's back on the 240 and test fit how everything fits now. Um, and hopefully we have no more rubbing issues with the wheels. Guys, I wish I could make this up. Yesterday we came and dropped off the 240 at James's house to install the roll cage. Well, look what happened. I, I can't make this stuff up. We pulled up to James's house, went to unload the 240, and the clutch pedal went all the way to the bottom. We have no clutch pedal. I don't know if the master slave went out or slave cylinder went out, but something around here isn't right. Oh, at least, well, the fluid's still in there because there wasn't any fluid earlier. So I don't know, we're gonna figure something out, but if you guys have ever thought about owning a 240, just know that 240s come <laughs> with problems when you don't want them to have problems. So, so uh, James just pulled up and we finally, uh, so good, good, good news, guys. It was just a slave, which is super easy to change. Look at this, guys. And then the car doesn't start anymore, dude. What do you want, dude? Don't, do, don't do this to me. Oh, sorry, never mind. That was just me. <laughs> and there we go, guys. The car is good to go. Goes into gear, bro. We're good to go, man. Finally. This car's lucky because I was super close to just selling this car to James because James has like 52 40s here. Ah, uh, dude, okay, we are good to go. Everything's gonna go as hopefully according to plan. Um, we're gonna show the before and after. If you guys don't know, James does cages. He did the cage for Vulcan's FD, he's doing the cage for the 240, and probably gonna do the cage for my FD now that I got one. Sweet. Um, but yeah, I mean, now that the 240 is running. This is the last time you guys will see this without a cage because next time we pick up the car, James will have everything in here nice and tidy. 240 is finally ready. We're picking it up from James right now. We'll let James come out right now, but look how sick the cage looks inside of the 240. I want to say a huge shout out to Bulletproof Powder Coating. They're the ones that powder coated this whole cage and James absolutely killed it on the cage. The cage came out so sick and he honestly did such a good job in here because the problem that we were going to have is that we were going to have to remove basically all of the panel pieces inside of here to be able to run the cage. I told James. I'm giving you a challenge. <clears throat> Let's see if we could cut like the panel pieces and try and fit it in there. And he did a good job. I just kind of didn't want to tear apart the whole interior <clears throat> so we could keep it all in there and he killed it. No longer have to use seat belts, <clears throat> which was something that was kind of annoying. Even though I have the manual seat belts, now with the cage in here, we'll be able to actually throw the harnesses and everything in here so the seats and everything will be complete. Let me know what you guys think. Of course, as always, we'll put James' information right here. Sun, and the too. link link will be in the bottom. Yeah, you got to see in the sun, huh? Yeah, awesome. Dude, that thing looks so sick in there. Now we gotta start rebuilding the 240 because she looks kind of crazy. I was gonna say, what are you doing to that? Uh, I'm doing a full time attack cage on this one. So you see all the steel right here on the ground. This is a Rose car. <coughs> a full 
prime attack in this thing. Dude, like I like I told you guys, I wasn't playing. James <laughs> does a lot of things. And now as you guys can see, literally in the garage, he's about to put a full cage in this time attack Porsche, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Dude, smash my head. I got kids hanging up in the ceiling. Dude, literally, full shop out of the garage. We gotta build the shop out back. Dude, this thing is sick though. Look at the wide body on this. Yeah, Damn. That's cool, man. The 325. That, on the rear? Yeah. Jesus. That's freaking huge. Before we ended today's vlog, I really wanted to show you guys how pretty the cage looks like in the daytime. And there she is, fully installed. I don't know if you guys can really tell. The proof absolutely killed it on this cage. The cherry red powder coating that they did looks so good, specifically when the sun hits it. Also want to say huge, huge, huge shout out to James. The cage, um, you couldn't really tell the other night, but the way it's built, it's literally built so perfect. There, there is literally no room at all. This cage is literally dead on perfect. Everything literally fits so perfect onto the floor. The pieces and everything look so good in here. So I just want to say huge shout out to James because Yes, everything looks so good in here, but the 240 is definitely on its way back to being good And I'm super stoked and excited and I hope you guys are excited to have the 240 back because We'll be able to have both of the JDM basically legends back together in the car But I want to know what you guys think of the roll cage as always I appreciate you guys so much for the love and positivity that you guys show me And as always I wish you guys nothing but positivity and good energy till next time peace